My name is Gianluca Zanna. I was an Italian by birth and I became an American by choice. Our lives and freedoms are in danger. This is not a dream. If you're listening to this broadcasting, you are the resistance. Welcome to Love, Guns and Freedom. We're not afraid. Here we go, guys. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Luca Zan on KTalks 1340 AM and on United States.fm network. You know, I want to use this opportunity because I call it an opportunity to be on the air to do something good. You know, I really believe that if you want to change this uh, political system, we have to become part of the system, okay? And I really invite, and I'm so glad and excited when I see especially young people uh, running for office. I don't care which uh, type of office, a local, state, county, I don't care, even for the school board, it's, it's important. Well, we understand that unfortunately the, the pros, the people that have been being politicians for years, they have failed us. They have failed us at so many levels. You know, you know, you start to get into that machine of corruption and power, and you become more corrupt. So it's good to change blood. And uh, also very important, you know, I'm here with this uh, radio show, my humble radio show, and my purpose is not to push anybody, but just to give the chance to people who want to run for office to at least be on record. You know, of course, there are two different type of people. Uh, people that already been in office, and uh, at that point, I'm going to also give you my opinion about what their promises or what their record is, according to my principles. You know, I mean, everybody's different. I'm not here to be, um, I have an agenda myself. My agenda is America. My agenda is the sovereignty of this country. My agenda is the Republic. My agenda is the Bill of Rights. My agenda is the Constitution. My agenda that the government doesn't work for us, but, you know, I mean, excuse me, the war the government work for us and we do not work for the government. My agenda is freedom. That's where I am. But at the same time, you know, I want to give the opportunity, of course, to people that uh, are running for office as a new people and new politicians or new statement in this case, I like the term statement, to at least be on record. And then, of course, we can follow their path if they make it. And more important, you have a chance today as a listener to uh, judge, to have an opportunity to have more information before you go to the voting polls. Now, I want to remind the invitation to everybody. I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, so I'm here as an independent, and more important, I'm trying to be just a host. Uh, I will ask questions, though, that they are pertinent for me to the principles and the values that I believe that I just told you. So that's the bottom line. So I'm not here to endorse anybody. I'm not here to put down anybody. All I am here to ask serious questions that I hope maybe are the same questions you listeners uh, pretty much you may have. Now, let's go straight to business. There is a young man that, uh, you know, I like him. You know, when I said before, I see young men, I see the future because uh, I'm tired of these old politicians that, you know, that they need to go home and retire, in my opinion. They need to give us some space. We need, because after all, they failed us. So when I see young men like this gentleman that right now I'm going to introduce to you, I have some excitement, but I don't really know anything about him. I want to be honest. So that's why I'm here. But let's see. His name is Paul Mosley from Lake Havasu, Arizona, and is running for a state uh, representative position in LD5. Paul, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, first of all, did I pronounce right your name? Did I get it down right? Mo Paul yes. Mosley, perfect. And uh, remind us exactly, I already said, you're running for which office for, uh, and uh, when the election is going to happen? The primary election is August 30th, and I'm running for uh, Legislative District 5, uh, House of Representatives. So basically the, the seat that uh, Sonny Borelli is going to vacate as he's running for the Senate, State Senate. Perfect. Under which party? I'm a Republican. Perfect. Okay. Now, before we start, I'm going to ask you some questions. A little bit about, you know, you look like to be like a young man, you're a family man. Tell us briefly, in a couple minutes, uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, what is, you know little bit about you normally i wouldn't care anything about you know your personal life because you know it's your personal life but now you're running for office anything that we may also you know uh, unfortunately it's all connect you know what do you do in your personal life reflects also who you could be as a public servant so to know a little bit about you well luca i uh have had 
I've had ancestors that have lived here in the States uh, since the pilgrims came over on the Mayflower. And I uh, also have an ancestor um, who was a big advocate of the separation of church and state. He was imprisoned in England because he didn't belong to the Church of England for two years, and he had to be exiled to, to America because he didn't want to be a part of the Church of England. So my ancestors came here for the freedom of religion many, many years ago in the 1600s. Wow. In the Boston, uh, the Plymouth, Massachusetts area. I uh, am uh, married. I graduated from uh, Brigham Young University back in 2006. And my wife and I have six children, one boy and five girls. Wow. I believe in the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights. I uh, do own many guns as, as I have five beautiful daughters. And uh, I believe in the, the, the you know, right to free speech, uh, uh, to worship as anybody wants to worship, as long as it doesn't infringe upon other people's you know, ability to worship. Okay. I, uh, Paul, let me ask you a question. First of all, what type of business are you in? You work for a company, you're a business owner. What do you do for a living? So I actually own um, I actually own my own small business. I'm a franchise owner of Ameriprise Financial. So okay. I am a certified financial planner. Wow, interesting. Maybe I may call you after this. Okay, <laughs> very good. Listen, now the question is this way. You know, uh, you know that uh, the commitment that you're going to face, you got you have to. We don't live very close to Phoenix. Okay, I mean Lake Havas to Phoenix is kind of a trip. You need to start to relocate, or at least to start to move part of the year there in Phoenix, and. Uh, the paycheck uh, for our public servants in, in this state is not that good compared to other states. So this is not something you can really replace your income. How can you justify to your family uh, doing this decision that I think it's a noble decision, but at the same time it's also economically, I don't think it's a very good decision when you have to feed uh, uh, all your family, you know, six kids and a wife, and uh, you're going to leave behind your business a little bit. Well, well, uh, Luca, the wonderful thing about my business is that uh, I have access to my clients via my cell phone and my laptop. Uh -huh. And the markets are only really open in the morning. You know, the, the right now the stock market closes at one o'clock. And so most of my business I do in the morning and I can do business with my clients via Phoenix. I'm licensed in a dozen states. So, you know, I have many clients that are just not not just right here in Mojave County, but also in other states like California and Nevada. Perfect, perfect. Um, so you are a financial advisor, so you understand budgets, or at least you understand the idea of saving and free market. That's good. Okay, now let's start first of all. You know, I, I do basic questions that normally I do, I ask to every candidate or even people, uh, you know, public servant that they are in office. The first question I have for you, you know, uh, what is the role of government for you? I mean, what government really should do? I mean, according to your beliefs and according to your knowledge. Well, the the only reason why we why we need or why we have government is so that we can keep our freedom. We can keep our liberties. Okay. Government is supposed to just protect those freedoms and those liberties, right? Uh-huh. And I'm trying from to other countries and from other people infringing upon those liberties. You know, I don't I don't really believe the government should really be much into our health care, really much into, you know, things that they don't need to be. I mean, if we could privatize everything, it would probably be more efficient. I mean, you look at the post office. It's run by the government and they're they're deep in debt. Um, you know, anything anything that the government takes control of, like like healthcare, it just makes it worse, makes it more expensive, makes mm -hmm. it harder to work with, you know. So okay. you know, the government really is there to protect us. So I believe that we should have a strong military. And you know, there are some public services like libraries and fire departments and police officers. To a certain extent, you know, sometimes some of our public officers um, you know infringe upon you know our freedoms but for the most part they're here and they're doing a good job to protect us and to keep us free okay listen very important thing you, you you brought up a point i was going to ask you in a little bit you know uh beside what of course the role of government is to defend our rights you know also as uh, uh, stated in the declaration of independence that's the way it should be at least uh, one thing you said, you know, uh, privatization, and uh, I believe in privatization, probably most of the things the private can do better, but what do you think about the specific thing when it comes down to uh, private prisons, you know, the business of private prison? Do you support private prisons or you think the government should be something in the, in the correctional system should be part of the government role? Well, I don't know, that, I don't know everything that there is to know about private private prisons and private, uh, you know, prison systems. But what I do know is that 
if 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 the government has the pri the, the prisons, then they're more expensive for the government to run because the government has you know to pay their you know employees you know all this and they have to pay them all the benefits and things like that. Whereas if I understand it correctly, the private prison system actually saves the government a lot of money. It's a contract for say 20 or 30 years and the government doesn't have to pay to build the prison. They don't have to, you know, you know, they just paid it a management company or, you know, to manage it. And then, you know, they hire their employees, they give the employees benefits. So the employees don't have, you know, mm -hmm. say state, state pensions and things like that. And then at the end of the term, like the 20 or 30 years, the prison actually just becomes ownership of the state. So it's a great way for the government to save a lot of money. Um, okay. You know, let me tell you one thing about uh, this one, because maybe we have a little bit of differences of opinion here. Uh, you ever heard about Benito Mussolini, the Italian fascist, have, uh, socialist? I have, yeah, I have heard of Mussolini. Yes, yes. Uh, Mussolini defined fascism with this very simple phrase. OK, I'm trying to paraphrase it. Fascism is the union between the state and the corporations. OK, I believe completely that, you know, private can do better many things. But when it comes down to something so important, you know, uh, like, for example, the correctional system, the, 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 the system that is going to put people in jail and keep them in jail. And you know very well about the powers of the lobbies, correct? I mean, lobbies, they are powerful. And, uh, for example, there was a case in Colorado, in the state of Colorado, that these private prisons uh, sued the state because the state could not fulfill, could not fill their rooms like an hotel room, okay, uh, with customers. In this case, the customers were the prisoners. So what, but what my really concern is when it comes down to uh, private prisons, as much as I may understand there may be some saving on the long run, uh, I believe that the danger that we are facing as a free society is going to be that we're going to have a very dangerous situation where lobbies from the private system, um, I almost call it mafia because for me they are kind of a mafia when it comes down to what they've been doing and they, they, there, is, there are proofs that they've been pushing to have more legislation and more laws to put people in jail that before 20, 30 years ago they wouldn't be even a misdemeanor. So there is unfortunately and also has been proven by different police, uh, local police agencies that they need to keep the, the, the numbers up. So that's my uh, little perplexion when it comes down to private prison and there is another aspect also that I think really is kind of scary. Uh, you know, the private prison can rent uh, their uh, slaves. I call them slaves, after all. You, when you work for a dollar a day, you are a slave. Uh, you know, you, they can rent them to private businesses. For example, in Golden Valley, we have the private prison that the Golden Valley Fire District here uh, used to have 50% uh, of, their, uh, of their force in their contracts. They wanted to have demanding to have uh, uh, workers for private prisons. So I think that's very sad because, first of all, it's, it's an insult to American workers when you start to hire for a dollar a day a, a prisoner. And more important, there are also some security matters. And I think also there are some ethical matters because, after all, you know, these people, they are criminals. Fine. Let's find a way to make them punish. But I don't think we should, uh, a private corporation should profit out of this in this way, especially when it comes down to this idea. This is just my opinion. I mean, I don't, you don't need to agree with me, but I want just to give you my rest of the story. So at least you know where I am from when it comes down to private prison. But uh, I hope you can have an open mind to think, you know. Are you familiar with the Colorado lawsuit, you know, for the for the for the uh, private prison system that sued the state because they didn't have enough customers in their jail in their prisons? So I'm I'm not familiar with that specific case, but I mean I'm I'm definitely open. I definitely have an open mind. Yeah. Um, just think yeah. about it. Just I mean, my point is that to give you, you know, unfortunately, there's always the other side of the story. Sometimes you know there is no perfect solution. And I, I wanted just to let you know that. So just think about that in case you make it something to consider. Now, big question. It's the most important question after all. I don't care if you're poor or rich or whatever. You know, we all have one piece of real estate that uh, it's ours. It's our body. And the question is, who owns our body? Us or the government? Or God, if you believe in God? Well, I mean, everything we have is from God. Okay. Now, let's say I have a lot of listeners that are Christians, like myself, but also I have some listeners that, you know, they're atheists, or maybe they're Buddhists. They don't believe in God. So, who, believe, who, who owns the, the government, excuse me, the body? The government or you? I mean, we, we have our own freedom and agency of our own bodies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as long as I, you know, don't use my body to hurt other people, like, you know, if I, 
you know, kill somebody, you know, then, then, you know, I, perfect. And in, in, in essence, I have the freedom to use my body how I want perfect. until, until I abuse that freedom. And then, you know, basically the consequence of that abuse could be that I, you know, I could be put in prison or whatever. Perfect. I mean, we agree with the principles that, you know, we have rights until we do, inf we do infringe on somebody else's rights. Correct. I mean, for example, right now I'm in my house, in the safety of my house, and I have a bottle of wine. And uh, according to my religion, wine is okay. So I'm drinking wine and I can get drunk. But, you know, I am not in danger anybody else. And uh, we're okay with that. Are we okay with this uh, situation? Sure. Perfect. And of course, if I, I'm drunk and if I go on the road and I hurt somebody, even if I don't hurt somebody, just because I'm drunk, I should be punished because I may endanger somebody else. So this is a very basic thing. Now, this is another important thing, you know, that normally I don't talk uh, um, because I am doing it. For example, I go straight to the point. It's something a little controversial that I really like, but I think it's important. It's about freedom. Who wants our body? For example, there is a big debate about the marijuana, okay? I don't even smoke uh, cigarettes. I don't smoke anything. I don't like drugs. But I really firmly believe, if we believe in freedom, and that we own our body, and we stick to the principles that I just thought, we just talked about it, we have rights until we don't, we're not dangerous to others. In the privacy of my home, I should not be, be penalized or criminalized or become a felon if I want to grow a plant of uh, salvia or a plant of uh, basil or a plant of marijuana. If I want to smoke a plant uh, like a couple leaves of marijuana or if I want to smoke a cigarette or a glass of wine. What do you think? Do you support legalization of marijuana according to this principle that we just said? So, you know, you're talking about a really touchy situation here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we have a government that really is kind of, you know, takes people from cradle to grave. I mean, you know, we've almost become a socialist society. We are. <laughs> Food stamps and, you know, this, that and the other, right? Yes. So, you know, I think that people should be able to do whatever they want, right, with their bodies. But at the same time, you know, the legalization of marijuana, I don't agree with. And the reason why I don't agree with it, yes. Luca, is because those individuals, many of them who don't, you know, just smoke a joint of marijuana here or there, mm -hmm. right? Who who smoke marijuana every day? Some of those some of those same individuals become a burden to society, and so we end up supporting them with our taxpayer dollars. We end up, you know, they end up not holding jobs and things like that. Now, in okay. moderation, you know, if if you know you smoke, you know, a little marijuana here, a little marijuana there. Sure, yeah, I mean that's not going to hurt anybody. You know, you're not going to lose too many brain cells, right? You're going to probably be able to keep your job. But the sad, the sad truth of it is that, you know, states like Colorado, where they did legalize marijuana, there's tons of people going to Colorado, they live on the street, they don't have jobs, and they, they then become a burden to society in, in Colorado and other states where marijuana has been legalized. If, if people were a little bit more responsible with it, it's kind of like drinking. You know, you said you have a bottle of wine, you're drinking in your house, no big deal. If you, if you then driving your car, right? And you're drunk, you know, and you're waving your gun all over the place, right? We would say, oh, you know, something's wrong with that. Well, the problem with people that, that take, you know, smoke too much marijuana, uh -huh. they, they eventually become a burden to society because they, you know, they're late for work and they get Both. fired or they you know, okay. end up not being able to support I, I, themselves. And then the government ends up being able okay. to support them. Let me, I got you. I got you. Now, the same principle, you know, this is, you know, free will, you know, uh, God gave us free will. We can decide if we want to be good or we want to be evil. I mean, we want to go to heaven or to hell. And the same way in our society, we have free will. Forget about marijuana. I can do the same thing. I have I know a lot of sad stories, probably with alcohol. There are many more stories that, uh, you know, UK people become alcoholic and they don't have a job anymore and they are really destructive to their families and they become violent or they become homeless. So at that point, you know, the role of government should be always to be there and watching over people because I can get drunk right now with just, you know, uh, with a juice. I can ferment juice and I can become an alcoholic. I think it's kind of a little bit strange, you know, because uh, how can you make distinctions? How much is much? And more important, you know, already now with the alcohol, we should, with the same logic, we should probably forbid the alcohol because the alcohol is creating much more uh, dramas in families right now. Proven millions of people, they have uh, alcoholic problem. Alcohol well, Luca, um, if, I, if I can interrupt you. Yes. Um, you know, back in the early 1900s, I'm sure you know prohibition. Yeah. The laws that the federal government put in place 
that basically banned and got rid of alcohol. Uh -huh. Well, as you know, those those laws they didn't work very well. All they did is create more uh, problems and underground mafias yeah. and gangs and you, you make know, my, a lot of, uh, lot, of uh, lot of people who are distilling their own alcohol. You make you know, my point. The same study with drugs. These drugs wars, uh, these drug laws, they don't work because all they're doing now they're creating more uh, value for the drugs, and they pretty much uh, gave in uh, money and a great uh, financial gain to all these um, mafia and to these cartels. And more important, what we do here, we have a very st scary connecting to the private jail system uh, cycle. Now a little ch a kid or young so, man so or any- Luca, here's the problem though. We have let, very Paul, let me finish one second. drugs today. We have very, very powerful Paul, drugs. Paul, Paul. Uh, heroin, let's... cocaine, where do you stop? Where, where, what, oh. do you, where do you, what do you legalize but, uh, and what do you not legalize? Let me start, you know, first of all, I was addressing right now just the marijuana as a plant, okay? Not even a synthetic drug. And I tell you, if I think that uh, a, a young man or a young woman can have his life or her life ruined, become a felon, just because found in his pocket uh, a couple of leaves of this plant, just because the government said that this plant right now is uh, illegal, like uh, 100 years ago was, uh, or 80 years ago was uh, a bottle of wine, you could become a felon. I think this is sad because at that point, you know, we can use this logic for everything, you know. Uh, alcohol or we can use logic for next time we become like the new Taliban after all in Taliban you know decide that uh, alcohol is bad you cannot have coffee and of course you cannot have drugs so the point is uh, with freedom come responsibility and I don't think like for the gun issues you know I don't believe that the collectivist I mean should punish the individual if somebody makes a mistake if somebody is drunk and driving he must be punished but the rest of society should still be allowed to drink in the safety of their home with responsibility and pay the consequences. If I become an alcoholic and I need uh, a liver transplant, I better have the money to pay for my liver transplant, okay? I better have the money to pay for my wine. And same story with the marijuana. And I'm telling you, I don't even, I hate marijuana. I can't stand it. The smell gives me nerves. But this is not about the marijuana. It's about the basic principles of freedom and the role of government and more important, what we were saying before, who owns our, go our body, us or the government? If the government starts to pretty much decide uh, how much is much, you know, we should remove also the, the alcohol. Because right now we know very well the alcohol is creating a lot, a lot of dramas in, around the world. But doesn't mean that we should be all punished. Anyway, I don't want to focus too much just on this. I got your point and uh, you got my point and everybody out there can decide what they think. You know, I know very well that most of the Republican people they probably they will vote for you. They still think that the government owns our body and our morality. And they can tell us pretty much, you know, how much uh, we can drink or more important, um, you know, we cannot smoke a, a plant. But the sad thing is just one. Think about it. This is going to create uh, a, a, a very big... Uh, if we didn't have a cradle to grave society, if we didn't have a socialist society... I wouldn't have any problem with anybody growing and smoking marijuana. You know, it wouldn't bother me. I, I lived in France for two years. I, I speak fluent French. And, you know, I got to see the immorality of, of the French. I got to see, you know, everybody smoking marijuana and living on the street. And, you know, they have a socialist society. America's going that direction. So, you know, if we want to go that direction, that's fine, you know. No, I don't want to go have freedom you know, to go that direction if they want. Paul, you know, the problem is, is that, you know, in France, people are not more free. They're less free. Well, you know very well that I'm against socialism every inch of my body, every drop of my blood. The point is, though, that we need to understand that is a, uh, we need to see to be coherent, you know, to be consistent. Because if the government is now my big daddy, for example, I'll give you an example. Something may be stupid, but I think it's very important. When you drive your car, okay, and there is a sign on the highway, put your seatbelt. It's the law, okay? Now, if you have seatbelt or not, do you believe that just because it's a law, we should put a seat belt on our highways? What do you think? Well, I, I think that's, you know, seat belts are interesting because they actually could, could allow people to be, you know, worse drivers. They could allow people to, you know, they think that the seat belt protects them and helps them. And so people, you know, could be more crazy drivers. But, you know, they also protect us when another driver hits us. Right. So, you know. You know, if you don't want to wear a safety belt, I mean, you know, it's it's your life, right? Not really, you know, because Paul, Paul, you know, I we understand. Have laws, right? We have laws, and so you know, the the way that the law is written, you know, we should be law-abiding city citizens as they are okay. written currently. And so, yeah, I'd wear my seatbelt, okay, for now, my own safety and because it's the law. 
Okay, good. That's a very important question. Now, my point is this. Or maybe I sound a little radical. I'm sorry. But the point is, if I go back to the principles, who owns our body? Me or the government? Me. Okay? Uh, am I in danger anybody else? No. Because I'm in my car. Okay? And I'm there. I'm not going to create all this drama to other people. Okay? It's not like I'm speeding or doing other things. It is my body. I also understand that this, the seatbelt can be important. I do. But the idea that just because it's the law, the law where the government claim ownership over my body, because after all, I know in danger anybody else. And I know very well that the moment that I do not put that belt on, I don't know where that belt, especially in states like California, even here if they pull me over for other reasons, I can be punished. I need to pay a fine. If I don't pay the fine, I will go to jail. I find this very disturbing, my opinion. This is exactly the principles you know, that uh, we're supposed to stick for. You know, the point is who owns our body. If we stick to the principle that we said, until we infringe other people's rights, we should be free to do whatever you s we do. We say, like you said at the beginning, this is exactly the perfect example. Why the state should claim ownership over my body and tell me to jump and put a seatbelt just because they think they have the power. Remember, the law, also slavery, was lawful. There was a Supreme Court case during the slavery time that was okay. I mean, Rosa Parker, uh, she was breaking the law. She was, you know, she wasn't standing up and getting in the back of the truck. Should we always follow the law even when they are against the law of gods? Because after all, you really believe that the government doesn't own my body. If somebody is going to own it, it's me or God. But uh, the, 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 the seat belt, I want you to think about it. I'm not trying to confront you, to the, but just try to have an honest conversation. It's the same principle that we were talking about, the drinking a glass of wine in the privacy of my home, or smoking a, 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 a leaf of marijuana if I do not infringe anybody else's right, and especially if I pay with my own money. So, and more important... So what, would you, so what would you do with the, with the laws? Obviously, you know, but, you know the, the seatbelt law would not be a very good example. You know. It's a good example. It's a, it's a perfect example where we are right now. You know, they so, let, that so let's say you get pulled over because you're not wearing your seatbelt. You get a fine, right? Okay. And eventually, what? right, I, I mean, guess. You, you don't want to know what I, what I, what I, what I, warrant, I read. A warrant out for your arrest. They okay. arrest you. They put you No, in no, prison. let me tell you what I did so far. And probably I got lucky one time, okay? So far, first of all, I always drive like a, like a grandmother. I never get pulled over, okay? One time I got pulled over on the 40, and uh, the guy was, the, the, the DPS was very nice. Around here in Arizona, thankfully, they are not like California. They look for other things, okay? I was going a little too fast. They gave me a warning so that I have incredible, I never got a ticket in 18 years in my life here, I never got a ticket, a speeding ticket or anything like that on, on, the, on the highway. So I was, the guy said, it was cool, no problem. And he asked me, why don't you have a seat belt? And I said, because it's against my religion. And I say, he said, can you articulate a little bit? Yes. Because right now, after all, I'm not infringing anybody else's rights. I'm not endangering anybody else's. And the moment that I put a seatbelt because the government tells me so, means that I give my ownership of my body to the government. Instead, God is my owner. And the deputy say, have a wonderful day. Maybe the guy thought I was crazy. I don't know. But that was my principle I stuck to. It was freedom of speech. It was freedom of religion. Okay? I wasn't infringing anybody else's rights. And uh, I was there, I had my insurance, I got everything nice, car was clear, I don't have drugs on me, I'm, I'm a law-abiding person, but you know what, there are some laws, in my opinion, that people should start to think that at least they should start to open and question. I'm not saying breaking the law, but at least start to question. And that's what and, I did, I questioned. And I agree to you to a, to a certain extent, I mean, you know, the, on the books in the, in, the, in the state of Arizona and in the federal government, there is thousands of laws. There's no way that you and I could even read all the laws there are. There's no way that we could even follow all the laws that Paul, there are. Paul, because there are so many laws that we, you know, we don't even know about. You know, oh, I drove too fast. Oh, you did this, you did that. I mean, you know, Paul, every, every one of us break the law every day because we're not perfect, right? We're all sinners. Paul, do you believe in the Obamacare? I, I do not like Obamacare. It's made our insurances a lot more expensive and the doctors a lot less expensive. And also the principles, you know, beside that more expensive, it's a rip off, we know that, and we cannot even keep the doctor we had. But the principles that the government is forcing you to buy a service against your will. Don't you think that's kind of scary and devilish? Or they fine you. Yes, so it's yeah. like, that's slavery. And uh, if now think about that and compare it to the seat belt. The seat belt is the same principle. You know, they started always slowly, slowly, to, to, you know, to creep their foot between the door, okay? They're doing the same thing. They're forcing us, the federal government, and of course also the states, because it's the law, 
that they claim ownership of your body, so you must buy a seatbelt and you must wear the seatbelt, even if you are not infringing on anybody else's rights, because they say so. Otherwise, you have a fine. If you follow the logic, is exactly though. is the I think same. A big difference between seatbelts, though, and Why? other things. I mean, it's a bad example, you know, for for you, because I have a twelve passenger Ford van. Okay. I have six children, and I have me and my wife. So there's eight people in my family. Yes. I am insistent that my children wear seatbelts, not I, because it's the law, mm -hmm. but to protect them from other crazy drivers. If, 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 as you said, if somebody else was drinking and driving and they hit my van, they T-boned me, right? And my van rolled over and my children didn't have seatbelts on, I'd, my children probably would be flung from the vehicle and they would be okay. a bloody mess and they would be dead. I don't wear seatbelts because it's the law. Okay, I wear fine. them because it protects my children, my family, and, and I myself. do the same. I do the same. I wear my seatbelt because I think it's a good thing to do. And more important, if I have a child, they wear the seatbelt, period. Not because it's the law. Because I'm a responsible father. So I'm talking about right now, let's not compare apple with oranges. I'm talking about a person over 18 in the legal you know, age to decide for his life, to go to war and to do everything else. I think should have that freedom to decide what is good for you in that moment. It's everybody under 18, of course, must follow the basic safety rules. And that's a, a must, it's a duty. But when you're over 18 and you're not, I don't think you should be facing the, the, the punishment by the government because in that moment, the government tells you, it's the law, I own your body, I know what's better for you. You get, by the way, the same principles of the seatbelt in New York for a moment, they had it in uh, the salt, you know, the, state, the, the city of New York, outlaw uh, to sell in salt, to give in salt during the, the different restaurants because they think salt is bad for you. And by the way, also they have the same situation with the sodas. I don't drink sodas, but I think people should have the freedom to drink a, a gallon of soda if they want to and get sick with diabetes if they want. All I care that they can pay for their own uh, uh, insurance bill, okay? I, I, I agree, but I mean, I think you probably you should use the speed limit as a, as a better example, uh -huh. right? You know, in, in Utah, finally, they've raised the speed limit to 80 miles per hour. In Texas, they've raised it to 80 or 85. You yes. know, in, in Montana, they've, they've also raised, you know, back uh, in the 1970s during the oil embargo, you know, uh -huh. the federal government mandated that the speed limits were as low as 55 miles per hour, right? Yes. You know, why, you know, I... I I, I would have like maybe a larger you know thing to say about you know the law the speed limit laws because you know if I'm not an, if I'm a good driver and I'm not endangering people you know why why should I not be allowed to drive faster right well, on there is a, highways and freeways and things like there that. is a general law normally you know that with more speed you get more um, risk to be more dangerous that's a fact you know I mean especially depends on the road the condition of the road and the traffic so. The general law, remember when I took my little driver license, it wasn't just about the speed the limit that they say, but also to drive accordingly to the conditions of the environment. So it's kind of a little bit more different, but that's okay. Lisa, I want to just. Not, not really, though, because there is facts that people who don't wear their seatbelts have a higher chance of dying if they happen to get in a wreck, whether it's their fault okay. or not. Fine, but so, you know what? If I want to die, identical, I, identical, you know, comparison between Paul, speeding and seatbelts. Paul, exactly. But the point: if I die, I die, and it's my choice. And uh, the government should have no influence to decide, you know, how I'm gonna die in my life. That's my point. I don't want to die. Don't get me wrong. I like life, okay? But the point that I'm not in danger to anybody else when I put a seatbelt or not. When I go too fast, I may be a danger to others. Anyway, let's change topic. Let's go to something a little more fun, okay? I mean, this is fun for me, too. I like them all. We talk about the legalization of drugs. We talk about personal freedom. We talk about, you know, who wants our body. Now, let's talk about, uh, um, first of all, economy, you know? How are you going to try to help us out to pay less taxes in the state of Arizona? Because I like that topic. Well, one of the things that I want to do when I get into the legislature is I want to bring economic development especially to rural Arizona, especially to La Paz and the Mojave County. You know, there, there are so many people here who live as retirees who have pensions, say, from California, from CalSTRS or CalPERS or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. These pensions are not going to last forever. In essence, our, our economies in, in Lake Havasu City and, you know, La Paz County and Mojave County, you know, they're very dependent upon these pension incomes, you know, to have money infused into our society. 
Well, we don't have that much industry, especially not down in Lake Havasu. We need more industry. We need more jobs. We need more companies out here. Um, you know, Little Debbie, you know, McKee is thinking about building a cake plant in the West. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, there's a truck hub right there in Kingman, right outside of Kingman. And, you know, they're, they're thinking about it, right? Well, if, if they did, that would bring 900 new jobs to the Kingman area, the Kingman Mojave County area, right? So, you know, I mean, I need to do things that would help to encourage economic growth and economic development in our, in our, you know, towns that we live in here. What do you think about, you know, there was a topic that was kind of controversial a few years ago, just a couple of years ago, about bringing the sale tax to all the internet stores, for example, that uh, you know very well, there is a federal law that uh, you cannot pay taxes uh, if you ship to out of state, you know, but there was pretty much like a group of uh, retailers businesses in Phoenix, especially that they advocated that every business, every Internet business in Arizona, regardless if they sell in the state or across the state where you should not pay sale tax, they must be paying sale tax on the Internet. What do you think about that? Well, you know, I, I do like the idea of, a, you know, property tax and and a usage tax, you know, so, so usage tax would be, you know, like like sales tax. You know, you buy more goods and services than you, you pay taxes, right? You know, the thing is, is that we're taxed in so many ways, though. I mean, you're, there's a death tax. There's a, you know, a license and registration, you know, tax. There's, you know, state income tax, federal income tax, Medicaid and Social Security tax. You know, then you have sales tax and you have, you know, not just, you know, county sales tax, city sales tax, state sales tax. You know, I mean, you know, we're taxed coming and going every day of the week. I mean, I'd love to figure out a way to lessen the taxes. Okay, but you know, this, is, this is a specific thing. You know, gas so that we can drive on the roads and. No, and I understand. Like I wanted to stick with this topic. You know, I understand there are too many taxes. I agree with you, but the point is, this is specific. Was an attempt from the lawmakers a couple of years ago to pass a, a sale tax for all the internet retailers based on in Arizona when they sell across the state. That we know very well. There was also a. Already there's some uh, Supreme Court cases that you're supposed not to pay sale tax when you sell across the state. What do you think about that? There would be well, something. I mean, you know, Amazon, Amazon would be a good example, right? Amazon sells stuff in all 50 states. And sometimes when you buy stuff on Amazon, there's no sales tax. And sometimes when you buy stuff on Amazon, there is sales tax. Yeah, because it depends yeah. on the, first of all, where they ship from. And more important, it depends the fact that Amazon has a, a basis and headquarters, or at least, you know, offices everywhere all over the states. In this case, a specific like little small business, like uh, that the mom and pop internet business, they move from California, for example, and they stay in Arizona, and they have just a little headquarter in Arizona, why they should pay a, also a sale tax uh, just because they are selling across the state to another state. And more important, at that point, you know very well, they would completely penalize them and uh, they will give it no more the edge to be on the internet. What do you think about that? Well, you know, like I said, Luke, I'm, I'm mostly against taxes, but, you know, our government is addicted to taxes. They have to have taxes to okay. run all of the programs and the socialist, you know, nature okay. that our government is. So, you know, I, I you know, I, you know, I don't know a ton about this, you know, interstate okay. no taxes problem. No problem. and uh, things like that. You know, something I, I to think about. Taxes, I'll give you but, just you know, they're, they're a necessary evil. I no guess problem. You OK, I want uh, just to give you some thought for your mind. You know, it's something to think. You know, we like to learn from each other. You know, I'm trying to learn from you and maybe I can give you some inputs here. There was a really important legislation uh, that they were trying to pass a few, couple of years ago. And I will send it to you. Something to think about, you know, because if you want to bring businesses to Arizona, I tell you, I'm a business owner, okay? I have uh, different businesses, and mostly I do internet, okay? And if I knew that Arizona was going to make me pay a sale tax, even when I sell across the state, I would stay the hell out of way from Arizona. I would move my business to Nevada. Simple as that. So just to give you an idea, and I will send you the link of that. There was a very important thing. I remember Senator Gould at the time helped us out to stop this sort of intrusion in our private business, you know, that was the story. Now, another little thing, you know, talking about how to pay less taxes. Do you like uh, Nevada, the fact that they don't have income tax? What do you think about that? Well, I mean, I think it's wonderful that they don't have income tax, but at the expense of having gambling, okay. you know, I don't know, I don't know if it's a good trade-off. You know, okay. gambling is a net negative to society. Okay, but do you gamble? Do I gamble? No. Oh, I don't gamble either. Guess what? I hate gambling because I work hard for my money. But guess what? If somebody wants to gamble, after all, who owns their money? Uh, the government of themselves, do, we have a, do they have free will to decide how they want to blast their money? Question. 
Well, I mean, you know, gambling's only legal like what on uh, the state of Nevada and Indian reservations. Okay. Right? So the point is, it's kind of a nonsense right now. It's kind of a little bit of hypocritical because after all, the state of Arizona tells me I cannot gamble legally in the state, but I can just jump in the car, uh, cross the line called reservation, and that's fine there. It's legal, of course. Or I can just bring all my money to Laughlin and make Nevada happy. I mean, after all, if we go back to the same questions, who owns our body? Who owns the fruit of our labor? Us or the government? I don't gamble. I hate gambling. I think it's a very sad thing. Once in a while, I may drop $20 at the slot machine just because. But the bottom line is... People just, because you, just because you want to donate to the system? No, just because I have fun. Uh, you know, they're my money after all. And I think if I want to blast them on anything, I should have that freedom. But so, so gambling might be illegal, right? But why do we still have a lottery? The point is, uh, even the lottery, after all, it's another form of gambling, if you think about it. But just the government says that's okay. Definitely is gambling. <laughs> you know, so the point is this, well, where you stop the line. Why, when the government becomes the final arbiter, the final uh, you know, granddaddy or daddy that tells you what is right or what is wrong with your own money. Since I mean, there's a reason, Luca, that you don't live in Nevada, though, right? I, honestly, you know what? I'm, I like Arizona for many reasons, but I start to, uh, if they start to move, for example, more taxes and uh, they sell tax on the internet, and I might consider to cross the border because I tell you, I like the idea, you know, Nevada is not perfect, Arizona is not perfect, there is no perfection. After all, all these are government made by humans, okay, by men. So there is no perfection, but we can work together to try to make it better. And for me, better what means? It means the government is not my God. Because unfortunately now we are putting go government now as a role of God, or at least the one that tells us exactly how to live our life, if we have to, what we can eat, what we cannot eat, what we can buy, what we cannot buy, how we can spend our money, how we cannot spend our money. As I said, I don't smoke marijuana. I hate it. And normally, you know, nobody around me smokes marijuana because I don't even like the smell. But I would defend with my life the right of the people to smoke rat poison if they wish, if they do it in the safety of their home. Same story with gambling. Somebody is so stupid to give their money away to, to, to that to the, the, you work so hard at the casino. Guess what? Go ahead. Make my day. I pray for you. I know I can do. It's your choice. After all, Jesus told us, you know, we have free will. We have free will. Otherwise, everybody would go to heaven. We had to decide what we do. So one of the most important things, Luca, that we could probably do as we get involved in politics yes. is we could bring back some of the state rights. Mm -hmm. See, America, you know, with Obamacare and with all the other federal laws, they dictate, they shove down our throat what we can and can't do. Okay. And it, it, it's making it so that the 50 states aren't so different anymore. And different is good, right? I agree. If, I agree. If Texas and Arizona, you know, have these, you know, you know, no no income tax, right? Like like Texas doesn't have an income tax. Yes. Right. Businesses are going there like crazy. Because, I agree. I agree. You know, I, I, they want to go to Texas because it's it's you know it's better for you know income tax. Now they they have a higher property tax because yes. of that. But you know the thing is is that you know I wish that every state, all fifty states, were a little bit more independent, and they could actually you know separate themselves one from another a little bit better, so that you know. Arizona could make, you know, things that would attract people to Arizona, the freedom that we have, the right to bear arms. You know, let's talk about guns. I agree with you. We need to have the these, ten of these, these gun-free zones, you know, they're great for who? They're only great for the criminals. <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about guns. Let's talk. We, you know, I like to touch a little bit every topic. So I don't want to focus too much. We, go, we could make an hour just about one topic, okay? But we got the idea. You know, we have our own different ideas and some we agree, of course. It's something we can learn from each other. Now, let's talk about guns, you know. Uh, you know, Arizona is the number one state voted by guns and ammo for the best gun rights. And this is, you know, I tell you, I think it's a great result. A lot of good people put a lot of effort the last 10 years. And um, so what do you think about the idea that, after all, uh, many politicians uh, start to claim that guns, they are for sport purposes or just to keep in your home to defend yourself? What is the real role of the Second Amendment. What is the real purpose, in your opinion? Uh, why do we have a Second Amendment as Americans? Well, it's interesting. I just read an article, um, actually, last night. Uh, so yesterday morning at 2 a.m., there's actually a financial advisor, and his he lived uh, in Utah, and he works for Cambridge Financial. Anyways, mm -hmm. he's 47 years old. 2 a.m., somebody's banging at his door, not just banging on it, uh -huh. trying to kick it in, trying to, you know, trying to 
break into his house. Well, he wakes up, he grabs his gun, he goes to his front door, and they have a, a verbal confrontation. And this, this other gentleman on the other side of the door is still trying to break down his door. Well, I don't know what was said. I obviously wasn't there. But in the article, the man started to run away. Well, the, the, the homeowner decided to chase after him. They got about four houses down, and the gentleman who was running away turned around with his single shot sh- shotgun mm-hmm. and shot the homeowner in the chest. Then the homeowner shot the gentleman twice. Wow. Bo- both men died. Okay. So, you know, guns, right? D- was it the gun that killed them or was it the man, right? Well, it stu- was- also, was it a bit of stupidity, the lack of tactics, you know? Ex- exa- exactly. Uh, but, you no, know- I'm sure that the gentleman that was the homeowner, because of the business he was in, I'm sure he had a lot of life insurance. I sure, I'm sure his family's going to be okay. I know, but, but you know, he should probably not have pursued him, right? He's not a police officer. No, he no, there is no the reason. Police. The police should have gone after him, right? And then he'd still be alive. Paul, you know. Paul, I understand. Let's take one second with uh, one thing specifically. You know, I understand this is a specific case. We could talk probably in the second hour. I talk just about guns, tactics, and things like that. My my question was. What is exactly, or at least what was the original intent for our, from our founding fathers when they wrote, when they put together the Second Amendment? What was so the, for, for personal defense? Was uh, to go of, out or hunting? Of, the Bill of Rights, as, as was written in the, in the Constitution, was so that every American citizen who lawfully is able to own a gun, which should be almost, almost everybody except for obviously criminals, um, you know, it is for us to protect ourselves from other people and from the government. You know, in in the Revolutionary War, why did we need guns to protect ourselves from the English? Yes. Yet we were we were, you know, we were we were citizens of England, right? Mhm. So no, we needed guns to protect ourselves because they were quartering themselves in our houses, you know, the the Boston Massacre, you know. Okay, perfect. Bunch okay. Of so citizens were shot, right? You know, it would it. have been nice if if they would have had guns, you know, when the it, when the British went out in uh, Connecticut to go get the guns and the gunpowder and the cannons, mm-hmm. that's 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 Lexington and Concord. That's, Perfect. that's okay. the first two, you know, scrimmages Got it, uh, of, you know, the, the Revolutionary War. So I believe that we should always, always have the right to bear arms to protect not only our freedom, but from from other people, from criminals, but also to protect from from the government. Okay, perfect. Got the question, got the answer. Um, do you like to, beside the philosophical, of course, and uh, the principle of the Second Amendment, do you like to enjoy to go to the range? Um, any specific rifle that you like to shoot? Did you ever serve in any military uh, um, branches? What, first of all, do you like uh, shoot at the range? Do you go out? So I, I uh, I'm a I'm an Eagle Scout and I have the rifle merit badge. Okay. And uh, I love shooting. You know, I in fact I was a I was actually an archery instructor at at a Boy Scout camp over in uh, Arizona called uh, Camp Geronimo. Okay. And so you know I, I love shooting. I own uh, more than a dozen guns. You know I love shotguns and okay. 22s and you know. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. I like to you know as I'm always I like to. I mean don't get me wrong. You know I have a lot of people that I know they believe completely in the Bill of Rights in the Second Amendment, but they they don't have a gun and that's fine with me. You know I'm. It is just something that uh, I like to also share with our listeners. You know our potential candidate. By the way, we're talking here with Paul Mosley from Lake Havasu, guys, that is running for LD5 for a state representative for the House, okay? So this is pretty much the conversation we're having. And even if you are outside the state, you know, say, oh, I am in Phoenix, or I have listeners, for example, from New York, or I have listeners from Scotland, doesn't matter. The principle that we're trying to apply here is that, first of all, every one of us, especially young people, should be involved in government, okay? And this is just a forum. We try try to talk about topics. Normally, I talk on the show. The show is called Love, Guns, and Freedom. Of course, we talk about personal responsibility. We're talking about individual rights, guns, and also love. Now, let's talk about love for a moment. You remember what I told you at the beginning? Who owns our body? Correct? Us or the government? What did you answer? Us, correct? Yep. Okay. Now, what do you think if a woman or even a man goes out in the bar and uh, you know I don't want to judge others because you know we're not here to judge but he starts to go out and be very promiscuous you know let's say a woman goes out and at the bar and every night brings home a different man or whatever you think that something the government should intervene 
say you go you go out too many times say you go you may be there you know be a sinner or whatever it's immoral what do you think about that promiscuity could be something the government should be interfering in our special sexual or social relationships well as you know our our uh the United States of America was founded on Christian Judeo principles. Okay. And some of those Christian Judeo principles made it so that there was laws in the original 13 colonies that, yes, were against this promiscuousness, right? Uh, our society has changed a lot in the last 250 years. Okay. Where the promiscuous n nature of our society is much more acceptable. And so a lot of these laws. Wait, wait, wait. wait. On the Paul, let, let me stop you one second. Paul. Aren't, in, aren't enforced anymore. Paul, Paul, one second. Can we, can we read together the First Amendment? You know, I understand we were founded uh, on these principles of Judeo Christian. That's fine. But also, there was very important that the First Amendment or the Bill of Rights reminded us that the government should never force on anybody uh, out there any specific moral or religious beliefs. That's why it's called freedom of religion, okay? Now, I'm a, I'm a monk, forget about me. I'm just talking for the sake of uh, conversation, okay? But I believe that if a woman or a man wants to go out and have as many partners they want, you know, I pray for them that they're gonna be safe, but that's not the point, it's their personal life. Uh, I don't think the government should have any business to even think about it, that that's moral or immoral. I mean, we should never, the question is, should we ever legislate on morality? That's the question. So, if you, if you look at the United States of America right now, mm -hmm. you know, since, since the 1970s, uh, almost, now, 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000, 2002, almost all of the sodomy laws have been struck down. So right now, no, the government's not, you know, no longer is the government in, in our bedrooms. Okay, right? and good. And, you know, and as I said, you know, I'm not gay, but uh, if somebody wants to do that, it's them and God. I'm not gonna be there and judge others, you know? After all, they're not, all I care that they don't do in front of me and they don't try to push it on me. That's my matter. I think, as I said before, everybody should have the free will to decide what they want to do until, you know, they don't become danger to others. Now, it's a question about love, you know? So if we're okay, a woman can go out in the bar and give it away for free, why a woman or a man should be in prison and put to jail if instead of just giving it away for free, he's going to charge for, her or for his um, work, sexual favors? Why right now prostitution should be completely illegal? Why is, for, you know, for example, in places like Nevada, uh, you know, there are some regulations, of course, to keep always the safety of the customers, but it's a business that I do not condone. Honestly, I don't like. I, 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 if I had a daughter, I'd say, please don't do that. But if somebody wants to do it, I think it's their body and should be their freedom. What do you think about legalizing prostitution in the state of Arizona like the Nevada's model? Uh, I think it's only only legal in Pahrump. No, there are also other parts of uh, north part of uh, Nevada. There are different counties. Because like uh, in, in Clark County, it's not legal. No, Clark County, no. But there are parts of, uh, you know, because I, I had the super professional number one uh, uh, legal prostitute, Air Force Amy. She was in the Reno area. So in North, that part of Reno, it's, it's legal. But regardless, you know, forget about Nevada. I think the point is the principle. Who owns our body? If I am a worker, if I am a farmer, okay, if I am a... A person that goes there and picking up vegetables, I'm selling you my arms. I'm selling you the strength of my body to do the job. You pay me for the hour. A woman maybe doesn't have the strength. Maybe she has a different type of muscles she wants to, uh, you know, sell. And don't get me wrong, I don't like it. But guess what? It's their right. And I don't think she should go to jail because she does a private commerce with uh, somebody else without coercion. There is no coercion. That's the most important thing. So anyway, do you condone? I mean, do you condone? Would you approve the idea to have a legalization of prostitution? You know, I mean, I, I'm a God-fearing man and I'm a Christian man. And, okay. you know, I, I don't want something like that to ever be legal. Okay. You know, in, 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 in the States or out of the States, you know, I mean, it's, it's horrible. It's ungodly. It's, okay. you know, it's against human nature. You know, I mean, you know, marriage. Paul, Paul, that's fine. To be uh, Paul, I, I, I agree with you, Paul. It's, I agree. It's uh, listen to me. And it Paul, should, should remain to me. that way. Paul, so. this, we believe in the same thing, but there's a difference, though. I don't want to impose my beliefs on others. You know, I mean, not everybody believes in what we do. 
okay? This is your opinion. I mean, you have your religious beliefs. And by the way, since we're speaking about religion, you know, I am, I'm a Christian without church, okay? I'm a Reformed Catholic. I ran from the Pope because I don't stand any man between me and God, okay? What is your background? Because I would like to know, so at least everybody understands, you know, it's important. You, you're bringing up now your morals according to your religion. What is your, exactly your church? I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Perfect. So that's good. You know, and I like that because everybody must be proud of what they do. And the only thing I say, you know, for my personal religion, I would never impose my beliefs on others. I don't go to prostitute. I never went to a prostitute in my life. I don't gamble. I don't smoke marijuana. At the same time, I think everybody should have the free will to decide how to live their life without government interference. Government should never, in my opinion, never legislate on morality. Now, I, we don't have the time. So, so, so to answer your question, though, I mean, you know, should should prostitution be be legal? Yeah. You know, uh, from my opinion, I would. I, you know what? For sure, shouldn't you know, be you know, criminal. I mean, you know, it's, it's 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 very hard to regulate that. I mean, you know. As long as everything's happening behind closed doors and, and things like that, you know. But I mean, do I want more of that in our society? No. 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 So let, I mean, I, let I me tell you, kind of do I actually kind of do like the laws against it, Paul? Because Paul. I don't like it. In Prostitution general. is going to be with or without the government's approval, like the drugs. The True, but there might be a lot more of it. No, it's going to be worse. The problem the that now, for example, like drugs, you know, I give you an example. Let's stick with prostitution. When you go to the black market, you know, you're going to have the mafia, you're going to have the, the pimps, you're going to have violence, you're going to have slavery. That's the prostitution that we have right now. And you have diseases, okay? That's the bottom line. And on top, you know, if you want to talk about fair share, they're not paying taxes. The mafia doesn't pay taxes, okay? Instead, when you have the model like Nevada, you have regulation. That means, you know, at least you have some basic uh, health Nobody got really got sick doing these uh, uh, legal brothels, according to the data from the government. And more important, you have something that you, give, you, give, you get away from the control of the bad people or the mafia, and you give the opportunity for every human being to decide what they want to do with their body. And they, they answer only to God. They will answer only to God, not to another human. That's my humble opinion. Listen, I want to give you 60 seconds. You've been great. I really appreciate your time. You can say whatever you want. 60 seconds. Uh, people, how can they reach you? Your website, everything. Go ahead. Well, I'm ready for House of Representatives as a Republican here in Arizona. I'm pro-life, pro-family. Um, you know, in 2014, when they just did the uh, statistics, for every 1,000 live births, there was 147 aborted babies. Um, you know, I wish that we could get away, get rid of or do away with these horrible numbers. Um, you know, I, I, for economic development and for, you know, businesses, as I'm a small business owner to do well and for us to keep our freedom, our right to bear arms, our right of free speech, our right to worship as we wish, wherever we wish. Um, I love the great state of Arizona. I grew up here my whole life. I graduated from high school here. I uh, choose to raise my family here. And I want to really just serve the people of Mojave and La Paz County and the people of the state of Arizona to help us become a better state. Perfect. Are you listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Lucas Zanna? Don't go away.